So by this point, I'm sure all of you are aware of the drama surrounding the creator clash. Froggy Fresh and Idubs and Anissa, Anissa's mom, Keemstar got involved. I mean, I made like three videos about it. Actually, I think two. No, no, three videos about it. It was a fun time to talk about all the drama and I got to piss on Idubs a little bit, which who doesn't love? But alas, with all the drama over, everyone seems to have gone their separate ways. And that really leaves us with the event itself. And I was there and it was pretty good. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Tom Dark channel. I'm your host Tom Dark and last week I attended the second ever creator clash hosted by iDubs. And the main gimmick here is that it's a celebrity boxing event meaning that a bunch of YouTube celebrity type people are invited to go there and fight each other in the ring basically right? So I went down to Florida, stayed with a few YouTube friends like Rusty Cage and M. Plemon and basically the idea was to go to the event and see what it's all about. You know I'm pretty critical of iDubs myself. I've made like five or six videos across my channels talking about him, I think. And I want to say like three of them are probably critical of him. And one of them was more so defending iDubs during the OnlyFans stuff because I feel like he kind of got a raw deal initially during all of that. I think that a lot of YouTubers were making some pretty silly arguments. And you know, I still stand by that video somewhat. So last year when the first Creator Clash happened, I was told the event was pretty fun, even by people who don't like Ian. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go. Maybe it'll be fun. So instead of just being overly negative this video, I figure I'll start off with things I liked about the event, okay? Positive Tom, positive Tom Dark, Turkey Tom in this video. I'm turning a new leaf. So first of all, they had a little bracelet gimmick I've never seen before, which was pretty cool. Basically, they put all these little bracelets under your chair when you get in, and if you put it on, it will light up a different color or a different way in accordance with different things happening. You give these to a few thousand people, and it really adds to the atmosphere and lighting of the entire thing. Maybe it's not a totally original thing. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if other people have done it. I, I doubt the Creator Clash pioneered this technology, but it was a nice touch, and I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was fun. Secondly, some of the actual fights were really entertaining. The Harley Morenstein versus Joe Hennigan fight was unreal to watch in person. Seeing someone four or five inches shorter than Harley just throw him around like a rag doll was really funny. Seeing Harley get knocked into the host, or rather the, the commentators, I guess you would call them, was really funny. So that was a cool moment. Overall, just a super fun fight, and I think both of them put on an excellent show. I also think Joe Hennigan, who I believe is a professional wrestler, had a great speech at the end of it, uh, and overall was just one of the better fights of the entire thing, you know? So what I'm trying to think about who to call out, Jake, Logan, no, Jake got beat, Logan by beat by KSI, which is why I'm gonna put KSI on blast right now. I think pairing Harley's massive size with Joe led me to believe he would have the edge, but ultimately what mattered was their skill, their grit, and if they had what it took to win. And well, Joe had it and he won. So that was a great highlight. I thought it was very, very fun. And overall, most of the fights in general were pretty fun. You know, I didn't know everyone involved. I wasn't a huge fan of a lot of these creators. Um, a lot of them I, I actually was hearing about for the first time or I'd only heard about in passing. But regardless, the fights themselves were pretty entertaining. Now, another great fight I thought was really uh, Myth versus Hundar. Myth came through and won that one at the end, which I admit I was surprised by because I thought Hundar was like a total savage after the last Creator Clash. Not a shit on his ability or anything, but at the end of the day, I guess Myth just had the edge in that one. Seeing Aaron Hansen and Jarvis Johnson fight was also fun. It was nice to see that, you know. I thought Aaron would lose once again, to be honest. So I guess my, my fight prediction skills were not too great. But he ended up putting up a great fight and uh, punching the snot out of Jarvis. So that was a good one. I also found the Haley Sharp versus Marisha Ray fight a lot of fun and thought they did a good job on that one. And when Haley won, she ended up shouting out Froggy Fresh by his old name, Krispy Kreme, at the end of her fight. Overall, I mean, as far as the success of the event, it definitely was that, a success. And I think that the main goal of it, being creating entertaining fights, was ultimately met by the people running it, you know? I think that the organizers did a good job. I think that the talent involved in actually fighting did a good job. Clearly, they put their best foot forward. And I think another part of it is that the presentation, while I was there, was actually very good. It was nice. It was, it was, it was really fun. You know, you're in this big arena. It feels kind of surreal to know that, like, a bunch of YouTubers are boxing each other, but there's thousands of people there to watch them, so clearly it's... It's a big deal, you know? I'm here with your winner, Yodeling Haley. Haley, you just secured your first boxing victory. Tell us, what is going through your mind right now? I want Krispy Kreme! And speak of the devil, because there he is, Chills was a lot of fun as a post-fight interviewer. I think he did a great job. His voice threw me off a little bit at first. It's a bit uncanny to hear the, so how was your fight? But I think he really was a perfect candidate for the job, and they could not have picked someone better. With that out of the way, I'm going to give some basic criticisms and nitpicks I have, which I think could make the next Creator Clash a lot better. Um, I doubt Idubs and Anissa are watching this, but if you guys are, then you know what? I'm going to try to throw you guys some light criticism of the event and what I thought. First of all, one issue would be the fighters themselves. 
Now, I know a common phrase I've heard about the event, uh, you know, from people looking at the card is, who are these people? You know, who is this? Who's that? Which is, you know, a lot of people framed it this way. It's like, why couldn't they get bigger names? It kind of starts off weak just because, you know, just because you personally don't know who these people are that are fighting does not mean that they're nobodies. It doesn't mean that they're irrelevant or they're not going to pull anyone in, right? With that being said, I feel like from an objective standpoint, they should choose some better star power. Take Myth, for example. Myth is a name that I vaguely know. I know he's a Fortnite streamer as far as I'm aware. I remember his name from back in like 2017, 18 when Ninja was a huge deal. I'm not going to try to phrase the following comments I'm going to make as if I hate this dude or want to shit on him because I don't know much about him. I've never met him. I probably never will. Um, and I don't really know much about his career. But from a business perspective, I would never have this guy on the card. Why? Well, because he's currently pulling, as I write this video, 340 viewers live. That's less than I get when I stream, and I have like 100,000 subscribers. This dude has 4.5 million subscribers, and he can't even pull 500 viewers on a stream. And I don't say this as a means of deriding him for his streaming skills or anything like I said. It's a very hard thing to be popular on the internet for a long time, and I'm really not trying to do some like hater sh where I'm like, you fell off, because I don't care. You know, he can do what he wants. I'm not really concerned with his analytics from, from an outside perspective, but I feel like they could be getting a better candidate here to sell more tickets than someone who can't pull 500 viewers. Think about if they had someone with a few thousand viewers or 10,000 viewers live and how many more tickets they could sell. Now, there's obviously an issue of who will agree to a boxing match because honestly, there's probably not that much to gain from a charity boxing match as far as I know. They aren't receiving massive paychecks or anything, at least not compared to what they're used to as like YouTuber influencers or whatever. But Myth's channel is kind of dead as far as I can tell. And from a business perspective, it makes more sense to me to get someone who's pulling slightly more viewers, really anyone, okay? And he's far from the only example. One of the fights I was confused by was Jack Manifold fighting Dakota Olave. Now, Jack, from what I can tell, pulls pretty decent numbers on his channel, but Dakota Olave with 120,000 followers on Instagram is pulling like 500 likes a post. And his YouTube is similarly pretty dead as far as I can tell. Once again, I don't know this guy. I don't want to sh talk him or anything. It's not really about that. I'm sure he's a fine dude and he probably makes decent content. But once again, it's puzzling that they couldn't get someone with more star power to fill this card. When I was there in person, it was hardly sold out. There were a lot of empty seats. And I imagine if they had some more compelling personalities, which is what makes celebrity boxing, well, celebrity boxing, then they'd probably have sold more tickets and been able to give more away to charity. Now, I know Bo Blacks did a video speculating on how much money they make on the event. I don't want to go into that because I just have no idea what it costs to run something like this. Like, there's no way I could possibly research the, the money specifics, you know what I mean? But what I do know is that more famous people equals more tickets sold. It's as simple as that. Now, they did have some great contenders like Jarvis, who's on his A-game, Aaron Hansen is up there, but even the main card with like iDubs, his opponent Alex Wasabi probably is not pulling that many tickets. I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry to say it out loud, guys. Ugh, I don't think I can do it. Rice, you got to say it. Alex Wasabi is irrelevant. Now, obviously, I've already gone on and on about Froggy Fresh, so you guys don't need to hear more about that. But as for who Chris Reagan ended up fighting, being William Haynes, I mean, Chris Reagan is five foot four, I believe. Froggy Fresh is a similar height. William Haynes, meanwhile, is five foot ten, and he's not a skinny dude. He looked pretty jacked when he got in the ring. So if I were Chris, after months of training to fight someone my size, and then I got felted by someone who has no business fighting me, I don't know, I'd be pretty mad. You know, Anissa and Ian, you know, collectively as a couple, spend a lot of time talking about fighter safety and keeping them safe in the lead up to this fight. Let's say you're of average height, like five foot nine. Imagine fighting someone who's six foot three and has like 30 pounds on you, 40 pounds even. That would be ridiculous, right? All night here, Chris, again. Chris is constantly moving onto William's right hand. Well, that's basically what Chris had to deal with when fighting William Haynes, but on a different scale because he's like five foot two, five foot three. William Haynes is five ten. Now, in fairness, if Chris wanted to be painted as a victim, which he definitely could do, you know, he's not remotely done that, and I think he's taking it in stride. But something about the fight as a whole rubs me the wrong way. It's just an unfair matchup, and I definitely felt like Chris got a raw end of that deal. Now, when you write an essay in school, do you guys remember peer review? Usually, the teacher would be like, "Hey, so you should give the person one." compliment about their essay, then give one criticism, then follow it up with something positive. Well, you guys already know where this is going. With my criticisms aside, how was the actual experience of being there? Well, it was entertaining. It was a lot of fun. I honestly believe that watching it on pay-per-view is probably borderline boring for, a, you know, quite a few of the fights, unless you really love, like, specific creators involved in it. But being there with my friends, being able to see it all in person, talk to them about fights and our opinions as it happened, feel the hype of the crowd, that was a lot of fun, and it brought the event to a new level, you know, the audience being there. I I think that if you can make it to the next one, definitely go. If not, and you don't really care about any of the people fighting, don't buy the pay-per-view. It's a waste of money. Just watch the highlights afterwards. There's something about the energy of the live event that was just so much better, you know? Now, the event ended with the items fight, which I predicted he would win. 
improperly, I guess, because he, he ended up losing. Which sucks, to be honest. I kind of put aside my parasocial hatred and was like, hey, whatever, hope he wins, you know. There's a recording of this somewhere. I think Brandon Buckingham got it on video, so maybe it will be in his video. But I thought he was going to win, given how much he fought last time. And, you know, he didn't look that bad. I figured he would have it in the bag. But in the end, Alex Wasabi just owned him. And after the fight, he had an emotional speech where he cried a little bit. And, you know, that was kind of a nice moment, I thought. Despite everything, he just seemed overwhelmed from all the people in the room. And, you know, who knows how anyone else would have reacted in that situation. There will be a lot of comments making fun of him for crying, saying he's buck broken or whatever, but, you know, it's boxing, it's a lot of work, there's thousands of people watching there, hundreds of thousands watching live, it's a big event that he, you know, put a lot of time into organizing, so it's a lot, and I don't want to piss on him for just being emotional, you know, maybe, maybe I would cry too, who knows. Idubs, it was an absolutely hell of a fight, what would you like to say to all your fans and supporters that were rooting for you here today? Uh... I don't know, um, ah, oh, that shit's hard, um, 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 yeah, I, I, I really appreciate everyone, uh, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I really do, uh, appreciate the support, and, um, uh, you know, thank you for coming. You know, a lot of people seem to think that Idubs is totally hated now and that he fell off and that's why he's crying because, like, he has former fans who are now haters. If you watch my videos, maybe you have that perception, but realistically, there are still a lot of people who like Idubs. There's actually way more people that like him than those who don't. The people who hate him and are angry at him, the former fans, they're a vocal minority at the end of the day. I am the vocal minority. The same goes for H3. A lot of people hate him now, but at the end of the day, he still has a huge audience, you know? The idea that everyone hates him is somewhat delusional. He has a huge fan base. He has a lot of stream viewers when he goes live. He has millions of views on his podcast every time he posts. Now, H3 and Ian both do have a lot of haters, a lot of critics, right? And there's a very valid and very real group of people who have some, some issues with them. But despite those groups, Ian and H3 are fine. They still have careers. And a lot of people think that Ian saying, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea, is him like signaling to Froggy Fresh about the Froggy Fresh drama. But I took it as more of a commentary on the fact that he's more of a controversial creator than many realize, just, you know, down to his content. I mean, back in the day on YouTube, he got a ton of love for being super edgy, but at the end of the day, a lot of people now look back at that, not as former fans, but as like normies who have just found out about him for the first time. They see him saying the N-word and go, oh, hell no. Nah! And so I think he's probably referencing that more than anything else. I don't think he's referencing the, the small group of former fans who now hate him. I could be wrong. Maybe Sam lives super rent-free in his head. I don't know, but I just don't see it personally. I think he has bigger concerns than all that drama now. You know, as a drama YouTuber, it's tempting to make everything about the drama and make it as sensationalist as possible, but to lie about my feelings would be kind of dumb, I think so. I just don't want to do that. I think Idubs was emotional because it was a pretty wild event. I don't think he was crying because he lost necessarily, because he lost the drama with Sam Hyde. I just don't see it that way. I mean, at the end of the day, whether he wins or loses the fight only matters to him personally. It's not like his fans will stop liking him because he loses or anything like that. I think it was just a very overwhelming moment emotionally, and that's why he was brought to tears, you know? I mean, call me naive, you know, maybe you guys really think that he, he in his head, as soon as he lost, was like imagining Sam Hyde's face, but I just don't see it. And you know, if that drama's over and Idubs is done with all that stuff, maybe he can just go his separate ways from the drama. But on a recent episode of the H3 podcast, he teased a new content cop, actually. So what's on the horizon, Ian? Oh, do you want to hint at maybe what else you're going to do on your main channel? Uh, you don't have to say who it's yes. about. Yes, uh, on my main channel, I'm going to be addressing controversies, and I'm going to be putting out a... I'm going to put, be putting out a content cop. Yeah, yes! Oh, let's oh, go, right. baby! A content Dude. cop about controversy, related to controversies? That might be nah. nah. No, no, that might be sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. It's a content. Model. I am. This is a very vague uh, tease, so don't get like too. Have, it, have you filmed it? It's it's in. Uh, are you? Is it being edited? How deep nah, in the process nah, are we? Just, now that this all this uh, this stupid event's done with, I can <laughs> focus on uh, my pat my true passions, <laughs> making content cops. <laughs> <laughs> 
Guess we'll have to see what happens with that. Feel free to speculate as to who or what it's about. But um, I wonder if Ian still has it. I wonder if he still has it in the bag as far as making a, a punishing content cop. Some people have guessed he'll do a whole breakdown on Sam Hyde being critical of him. I kind of doubt that. What I think is more likely is that it'll be like a content cop on himself and his whole career and how he like regrets his past, I guess. That seems likely to me, but you know, ultimately we'll just have to wait and see. Now to go back to talking about the event and the trip as a whole, I've been to Florida a few times in my life, but the place they chose, Tampa, Florida, was a great city, and I had a lot of fun there meeting other creators, eating good food, and just enjoying life. That being said, the heat was a little too much for me personally. You know, I enjoy the, the frigid Arctic New England winters up here uh, as opposed to the fucking blistering summer down there, no doubt. But you know, it was a fun time. It wasn't unbearably bad. And as far as that whole trip, there's also a few stories that I can't tell now that I hope I'll be able to tell sometime soon because, uh, well, some pretty wild and some pretty funny and some pretty ridiculous shit went down that hopefully sometime I'll be able to tell on my channel. But as for now, my hands are tied, guys. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. But regardless, I had fun. Uh, good to be back to making content for sure. A bunch of the photos of my trip can be found on my Instagram, Tomba Dark, where I post all of my most based and pilled photos. And shout out to everyone who recognized me at Creator Clash. You guys are cool. And as a final note, uh, props to Idebs and Anissa, who I assume are the main big organizers of the event. Props to them for getting this thing together. I think they did a great job and it was a fun event. So above all else, you know, whatever drama I've talked about with them, I think they did a good job at their main goal, which was throwing a fun boxing event for celebrities. It was good. With all that out of the way, this is about going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. Leave a comment down below with all of your thoughts on everything, and I'll see you all on the next video real soon. Tomorrow. Bye.